Hi everyone, my name is Sean Goodison and I'm a graphic designer at Battlefront working on tanks. This will be the first in a short series of videos teaching you how to play our exciting new game. In this video I'm going to break down the three phases that make up each turn. These are called the movement, shooting and command phases and I'll be using the German Panther tank and some American Sherman 75mm tanks. These are the same tanks you'll find in our starter set. During the movement phase, each player will move their tanks in ascending initiative order. This allows tanks with high initiative to react to the maneuvers of their enemy by acting later in the phase. Looking at the tanks we have on the table, we can see that the Panther has an initiative of 7 while the two Shermans have an initiative of 6. Since the Shermans have the lower initiative, let's go ahead and move them first. To move their tank, the American player places a movement arrow so that it's touching the tank's hull, then moves the tank so that it sits squarely against the movement arrow's tail. A typical tank can move twice each turn. After a tank is moved, a speed token is placed next to it to show how fast it moved that turn. This will have an effect on their shooting, which we'll cover in a minute. Now it's the German player's turn to move their Panther. Feeling happy about their current position, they choose to leave their tank stationary, and again, this will have an effect on their shooting. Once all the tanks have moved, it's time for some fireworks. During the shooting phase, each player will make an attack with their tanks in descending initiative order. This allows tanks with high initiative to strike first, hoping to cripple their enemy before they can fire back. Since the Panther has the higher initiative of 7, it will shoot first. The German player chooses their target and makes their attack. A Panther has an attack value of 5, so the German player gets to roll 5 dice in the attack. For each result of 4 or 5, the Panther scores a hit, and for each 6, scores a critical hit. And that's not a great attack. Luckily, because the Panther chose to remain stationary during the movement phase, they can re-roll their attack dice once. That's much better. The Panther scores 3 hits. Next, the American player can have the Sherman try to dodge or deflect the attack by rolling defense dice. To determine how many defense dice they get to roll, we add together the tank's defense number, the number on their speed token, and the number on the attacking tank's speed token. The Panther didn't move and it doesn't have a token, so that's a zero. In this case, the Sherman will get two defense dice. When defending, each roll of a four, five, or six will cancel one attack die. For each four or five, the attacking player can choose one die to cancel, and for each six, the defender gets to choose a die to cancel. This basically means that 6s will cancel other 6s first, and 4s and 5s will cancel other 4s and 5s first. Let's see what happens. Now that wasn't a great roll, but at least that 6 will cancel out one of the hits. For each uncancelled hit, the defending tank is assigned one damage token. Now the American player gets to fire back. The first Sherman fires with an attack value of 4. That's one hit and one critical. The Panther has a defense of two and would normally add the movement speeds of both tanks. Ah, but all American tanks have the following special rule called Gung Ho. Treat this tank as making one less move than shown on its speed token when calculating its target's defense dice. This means that an American tank's accuracy is much less affected by their own movement. The Panther gets no extra defense dice. With one result of four, the attacking player, the American, must cancel one of their own hits. They choose the normal hit, leaving the Panther to suffer the critical hit. When a tank suffers a critical hit, they don't assign any damage tokens just yet. First, the defender draws the top card of the critical damage deck. Most critical damage cards also deal regular damage, two points of it in this case, which is assigned to the tank now. The real kicker is that most critical damage cards have a secondary effect. The damaged engine card limits the number of moves this tank can make. Finally, some critical damage cards are labelled as repairable, and we'll cover that in a moment. The second Sherman, having raced forward, will now take their shot. They'll roll the same number of attack dice. 
and get two possible hits. The Panther tank's defense pull, however, will be calculated a little bit differently. We start with the base defense of two, and add just one from the Sherman tank's speed, thanks to Gung Ho, but the Sherman tank has also made its way into close range, which is the length of one movement arrow. Being in close range reduces the Panther tank's defense dice by another one, bringing them back down to two. But some lucky rolling from the German player has kept it alive. Now that every tank has taken its shot, it's time to resolve the turn. The final phase of the turn is where actions are resolved and the game is cleaned up ready for the next turn. The command phase has four simple steps. Step one, destroy tanks. At this point, if any tank has equal or more damage tokens than their hull value, that tank is destroyed. This Sherman tank's hull value is 6, and it has 6 damage tokens on it, so it's destroyed. Its owning player marks it with a destroyed token, and can clear away any damage tokens. Note that the destroyed tank stays on the board. Step 2. Repair tanks. During this step, each tank can attempt to repair one critical damage card that has been assigned to them. A result of 4, 5 or 6 on a single die roll will do it. The Panther tank has a critical damage card that can be repaired, but also a choice to make. All German tanks have a special rule called Blitzkrieg. This tank may make a single move instead of making a repair damage roll in the command phase. The German player chooses to repair their damaged engine instead of making the extra move. The critical damage card is repaired and can be shuffled back into the critical damage deck. Take note that repairing a critical effect doesn't remove any of the basic damage taken. Step 3. Check for victory. If one player has destroyed all of their opponent's tanks, and still has at least one of their own operational, they win. Other game types and specific scenarios can add other win conditions. And finally, step 4. Reset the field. In this step, the players remove all movement tokens, and shuffle any critical damage cards that were discarded this turn back into the deck. So there you go, those are the basic phases of a turn. Repeat those four or five times and you've got yourself a game. Stay tuned for our next video where I'll be covering how to build your platoon and the differences between tank cards, crew cards, heroes, and upgrades. And if you want to find out more about tanks, you can leave a comment below or head to tanks.gf9games.com to download our free rulebook and see what's being discussed on the forum.